Hello, welcome to Toward a Quality of Life, coming to you from the Roxbury studio of BNN TV, Boston Neighborhood Network TV, coming to you on the 59th day after the catastrophic oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm going to begin by telling you where I find my information because people ask about that and I want them to know in case they think I'm making it up or going off on tangents as to where I get my information. I get a ton of my information from the alkalites, the acolytes who sit at the feet of Barack Obama and have... Um, websites and, and uh, articles, as well as other, other uh, writers who have perhaps opposing views. So it includes Huffington Post, Real Clear Politics, Politico. Uh, Huffington and Politico are sort of insider uh, groups with the White House. Uh, Reuters, Associated Press, Washington Times, the World News Daily, etc., etc. So, and all this that I talk about, I would hope that, especially if you're a young person out there, that you would be looking more about these things and anything else about this world, that you would be curious and that you would be scholarly and that you would, that you would try to think about things and find out what What's, what things are about, and go and do a lot of research on your own. Right now, the Internet is still a free, not only monetarily fee-wise free, but it's also a free, pretty much, uh, exchange of people's opinions and ideas and, and, and factual uh, news as well. Uh, that may change because the current administration is thinking about controlling news there actively, and you can go look this up. A lot of these things that I'm talking to you about can be found by Googling them, and then you will see all these references in case you don't go directly to the sites that I'm talking about. And as you know, when you do research on the Internet, one thing leads to another, and you keep on researching more and more deeply. But right now it's being considered uh, by this administration very heavily. There are talks going on to control the Internet. Certainly they're passing a bill that says uh, uh, the administration would have the right to shut down the Internet if it felt it should. Uh, and uh, they're also talking about ways of controlling the news and owning the news and subsidizing the news the way communist countries do. They have their own news machines, and that's what the people get to hear, and opposing points of view are not allowed. If this sounds all very ghoulish, I'd, I'd, I'd advise you to please go look and find out more so that you'd be more in the know of how uh, the sand from under your feet is, 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 is dissipating, and, and you're kind of in a quicksand, but you don't even know it. So anyway, we're here about the Gulf catastrophe, and uh, I have shed a lot of tears, uh, a lot of deep-in-my-guts tears. I can't look at the pictures. Some of them are behind you. Not even the worst ones are up on the screen. Uh, the one I see currently, I can see it from my point of view, is of a Gulf rig uh, out deep in the ocean. And by the way, the geology uh, and even the dynamics of water for the physics of the whole situation of drilling so deep in the ocean, of which we have many wells, not only in this country but around the world, drilling very deep in the ocean, is not adequately known by a long shot to even be in that depth of water for any number of reasons other than the kind of reasons that we've seen uh, happen to us since April 20th of this year. So this is about the animals, the poor animals. And my advice to you, I mean, when you're going to bring your child to a zoo or when you're going to give 
your child a teddy bear or an, a stuffed animal or if you're going to have a pet in the house, are you also going to say to your child, which I don't advise, I'm just using this as a figure of speech, are you going to say, look at this pelican suffering, look at this pelican drowning in oil, look at this dolphin e oozing oil from every orifice through, from its skin, just filled with oil inside and out. Are you going to say that? Are you going to show them the slow and painful death that all the life is experiencing that wasn't lucky enough to be, to be exploded and burned in the first situation that caused this disaster to begin with? Are you going to do that? Surely you're not. Is that the truth? And I would not advise it. Is that the truth in reality? Surely it is. And my advice, when we go to pray, when we have a religion, when we think we believe in God, when we think we believe in God, who by anybody's religion, if you do believe in a God, has put this earth forward in all its multiplicity, in all its multiplexity, for all the animals for life, and there's a reason to have an ocean, and there's a reason to have all that lives in an ocean. An ocean covers most of the earth. Temperature is regulated by it. Uh, weather is regulated by it. Food is regulated by it. Life is regulated by it in ways that we don't even understand. And so when you, when you think of your God, when you think of your Savior, whatever it is, if you have such a thing, think about the mortal sin. Think about the worst sin that can be perpetrated to kill, to cause a holocaust, to cause a holocaust as we live. And we think, oh, we're okay. Let me put some lipstick on. I'm driving down the highway. Let me go to my meeting. Let me think of what I'm going to be talking about. Let me go to my party. Let let me go watch a movie. Movie. Let me go watch the latest horrible, horrible violence, as is in our movies and on our televisions. You think you think that's adequate? You think that's adequate? While life dies right before you, and the nasty, the nasty surprise is as life dies in in a way like it's dying now. So are we. So are we. We are dying right along with it. And explain it to our children. How are we supposed to be living if life is dying? How are we supposed to carry on if the things that sustain us to carry on are dying? I wish for us, not really, metaphorically, as a figure of speech, I wish for us to be covered in oil for days on end. To breathe. You know when you go to a gasoline station and fill up, you know the smell of the fumes. In fact, you're advised to shut off your engine because actually there really is a risk of fire when you keep your engine on and fill up a tank. Imagine if you put your mouth or your nose right into the tank of gasoline or into, you know, where it's being fed from. And that's minor compared to the kind of oil we're talking about here. This is crude oil, and it's also a lot of gas escaping with that oil, methane gas. And may we all experience what it's like to have the burning and that horrible, horrible toxin coming in through our ears, through every corner of our eyes, through our skin, through our genital and urethral areas, through, through, through every part of our body for every second of every hour to have our wings laden so they know we can no longer move. We can no longer move. We can no longer swim. We can only breathe that highly toxic, highly toxic. And as it's coming in, it's killing our heart. It's killing our lungs. It's killing our kidneys. It's, ki it's poisoning every cell of the body. And we're just stuck. And that's the way it is. And recently, so some of these, I think one of the pictures has a picture of a turtle at the shore who normally would not be at the shore. And it's been said in the last many days that animals now are rushing to the shore to escape the oil. And the oil is very, 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 very vast. And... It's not only the oil you see on the surface, 
It's the oil way deep below. Huge, huge amounts, which the government denied right along. Now it's finally there's been such a consensus and such an overwhelming uh, understanding that the truth is there's just oil everywhere and spreading miles and miles and miles. And... Uh, by the way, this uh, horizon, I believe, was 80 miles offshore. So imagine how it's traveling far and wide that long ago it came to shore and is coming to more shore as we speak. So let us be covered in oil and know what it's like to experience that kind of slow death. And let us know what it's like to not be able to breathe, to not be able to move, to be virtually paralyzed as we suffer. And, and, and this causing, it's like the animals have no, no breathing, so they're coming, they've got poison, so they're coming to the shore. It'd be like if suddenly, oh, oh, there's no oxygen for us humans or things that live on the land, and we're all running trying to, where are we going to catch a, a bit of oxygen? But it's worse because while they're doing, while they're suffering this, they're burning all over in a most kind of way that we should only be filled with oil like they are to know what we are causing. I mean, better, there. this is a holocaust. This is a mass extinction of life, a mass extinction of life. And... Actually, it would be more kind if it could all die instantly so it wouldn't have to suffer. And you can ask God to what avail is the suffering that these innocent animals are going through. You can ask your God. Now, let's look at some of the more pitiable and pitiful circumstances of this situation. I can't bear to really look at it. I have to avoid it in order to carry on my life. And after all, what can most of us do, really? And, and, and we're, we've kind of been told to be paralyzed, to just be mummified about it. But I heard or I read someone saying that they came upon a couple of birds, sentinel birds, and sentinels are uh, birds that stand, well, sentinels are guards, that's what they are, sort of like the guards that the Queen of England has. And I saw this myself in um, the Everglades in Florida, where a big bird, a big one, big, standing with his chest like this, a big bird like that, was guarding his wife and his babies in the tree one day, all the while I was there, making sure nobody hurt them. Well, similarly, these birds had oil on them and on their heads, and they stood there guarding their eggs. You want to see nature, you want to see life, desecrated. You want to see life? Desecrated. Look at the Gulf of Mexico. You want to see human sin against life? Human sin before God? Look at the Gulf of Mexico. Similarly, this person writes how much cover-up there is by BP. And by the way, speaking of cover-up, they're using a dispersant. You've heard a lot about that. It's called Corexit. Deadly, deadly dispersant. Perhaps more lethal than the oil. So not only are these animals dealing with the oil, they're dealing with something really poison in the water besides the oil. The technical name of this, uh, one of the ingredients of this is 2-butoxyethanol. And very, very deadly to life. And why is British Petroleum using this? And why is the government allowing them to use it? Guess what? It's been used from the very beginning 
And what it does is it disperses the oil. That's why you see so many globules in the water. That's why you see the funny color in, in the beginning. That's why you see, you know, it's split off and it's because of this. And British Petroleum want to have, they were trying to make it disappear, make it not be seen. That's also probably highly responsible for why much of it, if not most of it, is underneath what we can see deep down and at various levels of the water column than can be seen right up top. The idea being that if if we can disperse it, we could hopefully get it to float away where n nobody will notice how much it is. And you know, of course, that it's people so know, and, and, and it may even be worse, how much it is. So, so this is the, the double poison that's going on, and this will have great repercussions. Uh, some scientists are talking about the fact that this stuff will vaporize, of course, this poison corrects it, go into the atmosphere, and it may come back down on us in the form of rain. All this stuff going up as gases condenses and becomes water and comes back down again as rain. So we, we haven't even begun to imagine the ways in which these poisons and catastrophes that are hurting and, and holocausting our, our own other creatures that live with us on this earth and breathe and feel and yes, think, yes, think, and know enough to know to be in with nature and not against nature as humans are. Here I'm looking at something where someone took a reporter around to show the things that, according to this reporter, were not shown to the President of the United State, States when he makes trips down there. In fact, the first photo op he had, if not the second, they put him on a relatively clean beach, not where it was really already completely despoiled. But this person was saying that how sad it was to look and was showing the truth of what's happening to the animals. And this person said... I think um, he works with a wildlife park. Yes. I, I forgot who this guy is that was showing this. Uh, what, what, what really is there? Um, he was outraged. He might have been, oh, he was a contract worker for BP. He took, he took a reporter because he was so sickened by what was being shown to the media and what was really should have been seen. And it's really not being shown to us. It's not really. We're seeing the oil coming out of that pipe, but we're not really seeing the disgustingness, which I can't look at. But we need to see it, just like we need to see all the dead bodies for people who are African-American, many African-American, for people who are Caucasian, many Caucasian, coming home and any other ethnicity and race. We need to see them coming home dead. And we need to see what's going on in the Gulf. A lot of cover-up, he says. This is a contract worker for BP. And they know the ocean will wipe away most of the evidence. And, the, and that's it. The spill is so bad, it's not wiping away the evidence. And he says that um, the shore, when they went by the grasses, the shores were littered with tarred marine life, some dead and others struggling under a thick coating of crude. When you see some of the things I've seen, he said, it would make you sick. No living creature should endure that kind of suffering. No living creature should endure that kind of suffering. He says the pelicans, when they try to clean themselves, they can't, and that's what happens. They try to clean themselves. Of course, they get sicker. They're ingesting the oil, but even if they don't, 
you know, put their beak on it, they're still getting it. Every which way it's going in, it's killing all their organs, which why, when they're so-called rehabilitated, they're going to die anyway. They're going to continue to suffer because already all the insides, they've got to feel like hell to be exact about it. And they're going to die. They're going to die. Even rehabilitated. So they go through the rehabilitation, which is another suffering from them. For them, and 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 curse, curse the Don commercial that that say I got troubles on my and shows them Don washing the birds. Curse them to use this opportunity that way. Curse them. Okay, so they try to keep clean, they can't, and then they become so exhausted from trying and trying and being unable to move, unable to clean. And there they, there they die, a slow, slow, painful death. I saw a pelican underwater with only its wings sticking out. I grabbed it and lifted it out of the water. It was just covered in oil. It was struggling so hard to survive. We did what we could for it. He says, how do you, he says, this whole island is destroyed. How do you write a check for something like this? And I'm glad that BP is giving 20 billion and you can bet being in on this cap and trade and every other agenda of this so-called situation we've got in Washington. You can bet they were given a lot in return too, you know. You can imagine there. And it's but I think the whole company every cent it has because there is no price on this. Both literally, it's worth more than the trillion that the company is worth and it's priceless. It's priceless. Okay, I'm going to have to stop here. And I want to tell you that... Two minutes, okay. Uh, uh, and he said, then in this little story, it says that as the boat headed back amid the choppy waves, a pot of dolphins showed up to swim with the vessel and guide it to land. They know they are in trouble. We are all in trouble. Do you think those dolphins... don't know? Do you think those pelicans aren't saying... In fact, they said the pelicans were screaming. Do you think they don't know and aren't saying, what the heck is going on here? And still they do their duty. They watch their eggs. They try to lead the boats. If you don't know how serious this is, get down on your knees. Bow down. Do, what it, do whatever it is you're supposed to do if you have a religion. And no. And no. That we are all guilty. And never mind this cap and trade baloney. Never mind this carbon tax and baloney. Surely we need other energy. Don't start bringing that in now. That's, that's not a topic for now. A topic for now is God save our souls. God save the animals. God save life. All right. I'm at the end. Thank you. And at night, I will leave you with this. You know, I sing, and I've especially been singing jazz lately. You know, at night, I want to turn on a record and maybe sing a little bit. I turn it. I can't. How can I sing when life is dying like this? How do you sing? How do you be happy? I don't say be unhappy, but I say, come on, be aware. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's fun and it's warm, it's a cosmic powwow. It's fun and it's warm, it's a cosmic powwow.